Hi right, guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, a little bit hot, midsummer day in late winter. It is now Sunday afternoon, March 6th, 2022. A little dog and I, we are taking a break from the deconstruction project from hell. Good Lord, and it is, since it is Sunday, uh, I didn't think I was going to get around to a doomsday sermon today. It's like every single doomsday sermon, of course, is talking about that little uh, doomsday distraction over there across the pond, and uh, so I'm doing my best to avoid that doomsday d distraction, but without it, there's nothing left now that the IPCC report came and went in, what, about 36 hours. But anyway, I am glad to see that good old counterpunch has come to the rescue uh, where I assumed this was another... Uh, story about the distraction. Glad to see it's not, although it's part of it, but we're going to hear from Paul Street. Paul Street is a regular <clears throat> contributor to, uh, to Counterpunch, to those little lefties over at Counterpunch. In his essay, I guess this was written uh, on Friday, titled, Stop the War on livable ecology. The war continues putting humanity in peril. You might think that statement refers to the war, you know, over there and across the pond. That's understandable. That crisis raises the specter of World War III more menacingly than any geopolitical conflict of the post-Cold War era. Here, however, in this sermon, I am writing about the capitalist war on livable ecology, still the biggest issue of our or any time. And once again, this is Paul Streets. Now, guys, once again, I need to make the disclaimer before I get into this, uh, <clears throat> this diatribe against capitalism, I am no fan of capitalism, okay? <clears throat> the war against this planet, against the livable ecology of this planet, while at this point, it, you can pin it on the C word, capitalism, it makes no difference. Capitalist, socialist, whatever ism ist you want to use, uh, it is the war against this planet, uh, which is the single biggest story in the history of humanity, bar none. So, Paul, being a lefty, uh, obviously is uh, more concerned of, of, of thinking that it's all capitalism's fault and maybe socialism or communism would change it. Wouldn't change a damn thing. All right, but I'm really gonna try to stop breaking in here. Just so you understand, I am no fan of capitalism. I do understand capitalism is, has declared war on planet Earth, but so has any other system. I would just change it about humanity's war. I am writing about humanity's war on livable ecology, still the biggest issue of our or any time. <clears throat> there is no war in peace, <clears throat> no social justice, no democracy, no demilitarization on a dead planet, <clears throat> whether it is frozen in nuclear winter or melted by climate change. Okay, now he's going to talk about worse than expected 
beyond our capacity to adapt and I'm not going to have that I'm probably not going to get to the end of this I will put the link on here encourage you to read this whole excellent essay uh, but we will see uh, how far I get <clears throat> While news-watching eyeballs have been focused on Vladimir Putin's special military operation, Russian journalists are forbidden to call it a war or an invasion, <clears throat> and the U.S. Western NATO response, the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, released a new scientific report showing that unmentionably capitalog capitalogenic <laughs> unmentionably capitalogenic global warming is increasing so quickly as to overcome our ability to adapt unless unless we rapidly and massively reduce the burning of fossil fuels. Of course, we won't get into the other side that if we eliminate fossil fuels, that's going to take us out of that frying pan into the fire. But anyway, this is Paul Street's sermon, not mine. I don't know whether Paul Street understands or not that it makes no difference if we get all fossil fuels or not, as far as the collapse of the planet is concerned. But to the extent that staying on fossil fuels, staying in the frying pan, will effectively destroy life on the planet, I guess that's good enough for a sermon. Back to Paul. <clears throat> Compiled by 270 researchers from 67 countries, the IPCC report is what UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres calls an atlas of human suffering and a damning indictment of failed climate leadership. It finds that nations are not coming close to what is required to protect cities, crops, forests, water supplies, and coastlines from droughts, massive storms, wildfires, rising seas, and blistering heat. The environmental catastrophe resulting from the mass extraction and burning of fossil fuels is already underway. It is not just a problem for our children and grandchildren. Um, well, I see that a lot of this is going to be a repeat of the rant I already have, but I'm just going to repeat myself. Uh, according to uh, IPCC researcher and University of Texas ecologist Camilla Parmesan, one of the most striking conclusions in our report is that we are seeing adverse impacts that are much more widespread and much more negative than expected. Um, anyway, he goes through the, you know, the usual laundry list. Anybody who's been on this channel for more than 10 minutes, we know what the effing laundry list is. You know, this is what I don't get is uh, every time someone writes an essay, I, I guess that at some point you have to start down into the rabbit hole of the doom and fear. Like, I've met this person recently. She just started getting into this, figuring out, sorry, we're, we're effed. So I guess it's just you have to put all of this stuff up front like there's somebody who's been living under a rock since 1992 who doesn't get it yet. So anyway, we got the usual... A uh, laundry list of, uh, good God, we've only heard it 700,000 times before, moving along, and this, this laundry list, is just the, top, the tip of the melting iceberg of the existential menace facing all humanity if 
carbon emissions are not drastically slashed in coming years. Of course, I would say if carbon emissions are or are not drastically slashed, but again, to the extent that that is a true statement, I will leave it at if, and, and anyway, I, I think you get it. <clears throat> The worst initial effects are being suffered in the mostly non-white global south of the world capitalist periphery, but the rolling climate calamity will, up, will ultimately claim blue-eyed Swedes and Canadian truckers along with the rest of the species. There is no planet B, white folks of the north. Meeting the grave climate challenge, the IPC says, requires, quote, transformational change in how human beings relate to each other and nature. There you go. Uh, and, and then I guess he's going to try to uh, define what transformational change means. This, this is the new buzzword. You're going to hear a lot of people, you know, basically defining what transformational change means. It's irrelevant what transformational change means because it is not going to happen. Paul Street, Sam Mitchell, uh, anybody on the planet with a brain can sit here and try to see who is more clever at defining what this means that we're supposed to do. It makes no difference because it's not going to happen. You know, it's, it's, it's like all of these Christians talking about the rapture, what the rapture is going to look like. It's not going to happen. But anyway, since this is going to be transformational change, you can look at, you can certainly get used to hearing uh, this, uh, what is it, not exact, well it is an oxymoron. There, there, will, there will be no such thing as transformational change. <clears throat> News coverage of this latest terrifying IPCC report, which likely understates the climate emergency, have been pushed to the margins by, you know, that little uh, distraction across the pond, which is itself intimately tied up with energy geopolitics. The conflict between white imperial, white imperial powers and fighters over there trumps and helps worsen all the other interrelated wars underway in the world. The war on Yemen, the war on Palestine, the war on Somalia, the war on women, the war on immigrants, the white racist war on people of color, the war on workers, the war on democracy, and, of course, the war on livable ecology. <clears throat> Where is the outrage about these ongoing onslaughts on the part of U.S. liberals who... Uh, who... I anyway, we're talking about that distraction over there again. Um... All right, so we, I'm trying to tease out the, dis the distraction from the thing. If, if you want to read all of the dots between this and that distraction across the pond, go on the link and read it yourself. Okay, <clears throat> the price of fossil fuels is worse than the menace of nuclear war, I'm sure. Book Hermit has something to say about the price of fossil fuels being worse than the menace of nuclear war. The price of fossil fuels here in uh, the Oasis of Freedom today is $4 a gallon 
we hit four dollars a gallon here in Florida today on March 6 partly due to the menace of nuclear war <clears throat> all right talking heads and politicians are obsessed with the price of oil and gas in the immediate political sense of what ordinary consumers and voters are paying at the pump and in their home energy bills as i just say the the you know the distraction across the pond promises to worsen the politically super sensitive problem of inflation by constricting oil and gas supplies leading Joe Biden to couple his denunciation of Putin with a State of the Union announcement meant to calm consumer voter fears that he will once again tap the nation's strategic oil reserves to try to contain pain at the pump. the nation's strategic oil reserves. I can really see they're, they're uh, containing the pain at the pump. <clears throat> there is another and bigger price of oil, gas, and coal, ecocide. And strange as it might seem to think, the climate crisis is in one sense more urgent than a more urgent threat than nuclear war with every passing great power high alert standoff that does not go full thermonuclear winter we are just lucky <clears throat> the risk of nuclear war does not normally rise with each passing day it lurks in the nightmarish and strange Lovian background rearing its head in moments of geopolitical conflict and then receding for years. We will see about uh, the threat of nuclear war receding for years uh, after this distraction blows over. <clears throat> By contrast, the planet fills up <clears throat> with ever more carbon with each passing insane fossil capitalist second minute hour and day setting off natural system permafrost and clathrate methane releases and melting polar ice caps global fossil capitalism is turning the entire planet into a giant greenhouse gas chamber, a crime on a scale that makes Adolf Hitler looks like a look like a small-time gangster. <clears throat> Every day lived under the reign of fossil capitalism is an escalation of the war on livable ecology. Has there ever been a greater transgression against humanity and life itself than the U.S.-led oil and gas industry's determination to grind ahead with massive greenhouse gassing despite its own knowledge of the dangers to life inherent in that project since at least the 1960s? I should amend every day lived under fossil capitalism to every day lived under capitalism. No, you should amend it to every day lived under humans. Anyway, this is his rant, not mine. The capitalist system is by its very nature too anarchic chaotic and dependent on constant growth and expansion to ever be brought to environmentally sustainable heel and it is hopelessly and irretrievably addicted to fossil fuels as Simon Parami explained in a talk at the University of Durham in 2020 quote 
possibilities for decarbonization will be constantly frustrated and limited under capitalism or any other ism. <clears throat> Effective moves towards decarbonization will inevitably conflict with structures of power and wealth. Some limited progress toward the decarbonization can be made under capitalism, but the most deep going changes in technological systems required to avert calamity cannot be made without deep going social changes, that is, transitioning to a post-capitalist society, close quote. Um, okay, I guess I will let this in, uh, this part about the distraction. This latest distraction is a pretext for upping the ecocidal ante. Fossil Capital's friends on the fossil fastest Americana right are using the distraction to advance the greenhouse gassing project for the extermination of human and other species. They claim that the petro oligarch Putin's invasion is the result of the West weakening dependence on Russian oil and gas resulting from, get this, the left's attachment to the climate religion. By climate religion, the fossil fascists mean the overwhelming consensus of climate science supposedly being used by supposed socialist, you know, like that corporatist Joe Biden, to supposedly block the extraction and burning of North American fossil fuels. I yeah, right. Uh, the solution climate denialist and white nationalist fatherland news, otherwise known as Fox News, wants its millions of viewers to know is to increase the pace of fossil fuel extraction and burning, and also, by the way, to ramp up nuclear energy, whose grave menaces to a livable ecology and human survival are also routinely denied on the right. As the economic historian Adam Tooze recently told Ezra Klein, the distraction across the pond, quote, opens a door for the creeping influence of a rear guard action of fossil fuel. Though it is also being used by Greens, by Greens to argue for going big on renewables, with even some German liberals declaring that renewable energy is freedom energy. Yes. Meanwhile, white-skinned North American frackers have been having a nice week, licking their planet cooking chops over rising demand for their lethal black fuel resulting from anticipated disruptions in Russian oil and gas supplies. They don't need Fox News to make their case to cash in the facts on the geopolitical ground suffice. Um, and then he goes in and he then he goes from, uh, this is a long involved piece, then he goes from fossil fuels and to nuclear, uh, you know, talking about the bombing of that nuclear power plant and uh, if the fossil fuels don't get you, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the nukes will. What could go wrong? People calling for the imposition by NATO of a no-fly zone and the further escalation of war 
might want to think about the 15 vulnerable nuclear reactors on the ground. Nuclear danger and fossil danger are intertwined in more ways than one. Uh, and then he goes off onto some little lefty diatribe. Uh, he goes off into, uh, from there he launches into Israel and Palestine and then he just keeps on uh, saying that this is 100% whitey. I have no idea if Paul Street is black or white. I could care less. But I think he's made the point that uh, nobody with any color skin other than white uh, has ever done one thing to damage this planet. If, if your skin is any color, uh, which I assume means if your skin is Chinese colored, you get a pass because you're not white. Uh, I, I am not disagreeing that, a, uh, that the oil and gas is kind of a white man's game unless you call Arabs. Are Arabs, uh, are they white? Whitey or, or Arabs part of this uh, this whitey thing. So, uh, if you are listening to this and you do not have white skin, go. You, you, you know, you got to pass. There's no way that somebody without white skin uh, can be a capitalist. Uh, it is only white people who are capitalists. It is only white people who are investing in oil and gas. It, uh, there is no oil and gas industry in the continent of Africa, for instance. doesn't exist. All of that stuff about Nigerian oil companies doesn't mean anything. But anyway, I've heard enough. Uh, we, we all get it. Uh, it. It's the whiteies. It's all about the whiteies. Uh, anyway, uh, okay, but we're going to, uh, let's just wrap it up, and you can go on if you want to read more about uh, how white people are destroying the planet, but we're going to read one more paragraph and wrap up uh, this sermon. So far, the IPCC reports nations' mitigation and adaptation efforts, such as flood barriers, automobile electrification, early warning systems for storms, partial shifts to renewable energy and the like, have been hopelessly incremental. They do not remotely match the scale of the, quote, transformational change required to meet the threats and save prospects for a decent human feature, future. That's true, but incomplete. What the IPCC can never change, but at least a few environmental scientists know very well that as suggested above, the fundamental transformational change required is nothing less than the radical reconstruction of society itself. That young Karl Marx and his brilliant future financial planner Frederick Engels called for as the only alternative to common ruin at the end of, you guessed it, the Communist Manifesto. As far as I know, Karl Marx and Frederick Engels were honkies. There you go. Uh, 
Anyway, I need to wrap this up because me and the little dog are, we're going to head back to the hammock and do some hammock time and get back to the 12 mile straight. I, I wanted to do my doomsday sermon by a reading from the 12 mile straight, but uh, it just doesn't fit. This was from the 1930s and is a very pro-natalist manifesto. Uh, so I just couldn't quite get a, a Collapse Chronicles Doomsday Sermon out of it. Uh, but anyway, thank you Paul Street for letting us know that it is white people destroying the planet. Yes, it is. It is white people destroying the planet. And every other color person uh, uh, destroying the planet. Uh, anyway, don't get, don't get me going. Uh, it is humans destroying the planet. Okay? Hate to tell you, Paul. You're right. Honky is destroying the planet. So is everybody else. Get out there and enjoy being a white person. Uh, if you're still a white person, and if you're not a white person, give yourself a pass. And we thank you for not destroying the planet, for not being born white. Bye, guys. This is this white person's, this white person's life. Oh man, that hammock looks good. My guy.